It's a sketch comedy podcast show. He's back, and he brought a new movie with him. This one means a lot to me because it is really highlighting a skill that I need right now since I was laid off. How to land that dream job. Like all of Goff's other movies, this is a fantastic documentary, mockumentary, sitcom, really thought out and highly researched that explores the best methods to land that job you have always told your significant other and and or parents you were going to get. And this time, let's see them laugh themselves silly or cry disappointingly. As always, you can go to BeerNutsProductions.com to get this or one of Goff's many other delightful movies, books, audio programs, or whatever else he's created recently. This guy is prolific and always has something new for you to enjoy. And now, catching up with my friend Goff. Goff, well, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me back on, Stuart. It's great to talk to you again. Well, I, you know, it, it's great to talk to you too. Um, I, you know, obviously we've got to wait until the check clears before I release the episode, but at least you're <laughs> here and we're talking to each other, which is pretty cool. And uh, well, well, Goff, ma- ma- maybe in that case, maybe just wait till Monday, then bank the check. Just give me till Monday. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you did put a date down that was in the future. So, uh, <laughs> um, Goff, remind everybody who you are. Why are you an uh, interesting uh, guy? Uh, absolutely. So uh, I'm a uh, I'm a filmmaker from Australia. I, I've got uh, I'm a blind filmmaker. I can't see very well, so I suppose that makes me a little bit unique. Uh, the fact that I'm a blind filmmaker, but uh, I run a production company called Beer Nuts Productions. So uh, people can have a beer, eat some nuts, and watch uh, watch my productions. And so uh, yeah, we, we've just actually released our seventeenth film. So we've done. Uh, it's uh yeah we've got quite a catalog now so yeah 17 films we've just uh and we've just released our latest one uh and it's the um b n m u right the beer nuts uh movie universe no, it, abs- i mean you say with 17 films you're right there with marvel i i mean well you know I- I've crushed Netflix like a little ant, and so next target's Marvel. I'll just crush them like an ant as well. Perfect. Now, you don't do just <laughs> movies, though. Like, let's not sell yourself short. You're not just a, an auteur. You're also uh, an author. Uh, you yeah, write, yep, yep. write books. Yeah, you no, have... I... Go ahead. Yeah, no, abs- absolutely, yes. Uh, there's uh, five books that I've written, uh, four of which are novellas, and then there's one... That's a very inappropriate children's book, which isn't actually for children at all. Could uh, Jimmy Green and his adventures in the Magic Forest and uh, what Jimmy Green gets up to in the Magic Forest? Well, I mean, I kind of want to go to the Magic Forest. Let's just put it that way. But uh, so yeah, they're they're all available for download, and there's also uh, eight audio downloads, so like twenty minute long sketches. So most of the stuff I do is comedy, which is why. You know, you and I sort of get along so well because we both have that shared love of comedy. Uh, and so, yeah, I've done a few uh, audio sketches. that, Like I say, they each go for about 20 minutes long. And so people can download the audio sketches and listen to them while they're in the car and doing driving around or doing whatever they're doing. So I always like to have a nice big range of things so that, you know, people never get bored. So that they uh, never go to the Beer Nuts Productions website and go, ah, oh, shit, I've, I've seen that i've heard that so i always like to keep things new and interesting well i you definitely do it um and and that's the best part and you have a new film you have a new movie absolutely called how to land that dream job because i wanted to look at the end of the day Stuart. I want to help people that's what i'm like the i'm like the australian male white oprah i'm here to help people so I thought I would. Uh, I thought I would make this little. Uh, I'm not too sure. Sh- I was having a debate with uh, Simon, one of my production guys, because I called it a mockumentary, and he said it's more sitcom. So I, I don't know. I, you, you've had a bit of a sneak preview of the film. So where where would you come down on its sort of uh, genre? You which which one did you say? You said it was more of like a, a mockumentary. 
Yeah, I, I called it a mockumentary, and Simon's yeah. like, nah, it's more sitcom. So, uh, well, it's what... interesting. I, you know, it would be more of a sitcom if it was following one person throughout the, all of the interview processes. But I think what makes this one so extra special and more of a mockumentary is you get a wide variety of people <laughs> looking for different types of jobs, uh, and, you know, just different backgrounds. You know, and there's some really good quality advice, career advice for a lot of people. Um, I I've I learned something. There was something I learned from it. What I I'm really actually genuinely keen to hear what you learned. Well, I see. I I live in Portland, Oregon, where everybody knows uh, Portland, Oregon. We've got some legal stuff here. (laughs) <laughs> and I've been taking my own pipe to these job interviews, and I learned that that's maybe not the best advice. That's that's not a good <laughs> tactic. It, you know, the thing is, is if you wait and the interviewer pulls out a pipe, then you know you're okay. But you don't want to be the first one to expose your pipe. <laughs> that's probably yes. No, well, if that's what you took away from the film, then then I'm glad. But like you say, I mean, there's a. Uh, I interview sixteen different people all up, so there's a that's just one of the one of the dudes that I talk to. But uh, there's sixteen different uh, people that are all looking for jobs and uh, all uh, that I give uh, really, I think, heartfelt advice to. I, I absolutely agree. Um, I, <laughs> now I've got to ask: Did you do your own stunts in this in this film? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I get beat up quite a bit, don't I? Yeah, yeah I, so. was, uh, I was surprised at the amount of violence. Um, <laughs> it was almost like watching a, an episode of Game of Thrones. It was, it was brutal <laughs> in some cases. <laughs> Maybe it's not, not as brutal as that. But uh, no, it was actually funny because uh, uh, there's two scenes, obviously, where I get kind of a little bit uh, roughed up. Uh, one of them, uh, Michael was more than happy to, uh, to oblige. It was all good. But Shannon, who uh, who gives me a whack, she was uh, a little bit more shy. When we were doing rehearsals, I said to her in rehearsals, you know, you got to actually hit me because otherwise it's just not going to be funny. And I need to know that you're going to be comfortable doing that when we film so that, you know, it works, you know. And she's like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I'm not sure. And I said, well, look, you know, it's part of the gig. So if you can't do it, then you can't do it. So she finally came good. And, uh, yeah, she gave me a good old fashioned walloping. Yeah, um, yeah, she must have, uh, you must have, like, she had some pent-up rage with that. <laughs> I did feel bad for your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she, she did a good job, actually. I must, like, generally speaking, her, her acting performance, because she's actually a really sweet and lovely young woman, so it's not, uh, it's like the total opposite. Her character is the total opposite of her and she did it really really well because it's a uh, like i said to her you know she doesn't have a huge role but it's actually harder than you would think to play sort of angry pissed off pretentious kind of uh, a, a role it's, it's not that easy to do you know so she did it really really well though i was really pleased with what she gave me yeah you know pretentious uh all of those types of things i i tend to that's the roles i tend to attract so I don't know if that's is that if that's a statement about myself or anyway. Um, now you use a lot of different actors and actresses in this film. Are do you know? Are are these people you just know, or do you do you uh, do you audition? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. so everybody had to audition. So the casting process did take a while because there's all up there's 21 different cast members involved in this. So it's the biggest one I've done so far in regards to casting. So, yeah, uh, I mean, some of the actors, uh, people who have watched some of the Beer Nuts Productions films in the past might recognise a couple of familiar faces, but there are quite a few new actors on board with this one. So, yeah, the casting process did take a while. And, and like, the, the roles are reasonably specific to... Because, I mean, I deal in stereotypes. I mean, you've seen the film. Every character is a stereotype of a, like an exaggerated stereotype of a personality that we've all come across in our lifetime. So uh, it, it, it wasn't as easy because it's, uh, I mean, they've got to be a little bit 
over the top, but then if they're too over the top, then it's not funny anymore. So it mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't easy to cast. Some of those roles were quite tricky, but uh, I was really actually, I've got to say I'm super happy with the the actors that I got. Absolutely crushed it. So I was really really stoked. Yeah, I the you hit the nail on the head with the stereotypes. You got so many of them. And I, I, you're right. The actors did an incredible job achieving all of those. Uh, you know, it's, you're not even questioning, like, who is this person? You know this person. And <laughs> you've probably accidentally hired them at one point. And so, it, or been hired as one of these people. So it was it was really funny. It's really a fun, sh- it's a fun uh, film. It's, uh, I you know, it's, it's, it's fast paced and that's what I really like about it is there's not a lot of waiting around and uh, the gratuitous full, full frontal nudity is a welcome and it's good for the narration, I think. Well, well, I mean, I, I was 50 50 on whether I should show my junk on camera, but I was told that it was a great idea. So I thought, you know, I'll just go with it. Well, and it makes, uh, you know what? It makes everything else uh, seem small in comparison. So <laughs> that means I've now I've now got to send you a second check. I mean, you're, gonna co- you're costing me a fortune, Stuart. I know, but think of all the lucky, lucky ladies that you're going to fool into um, uh, doing things. Uh, so uh, after this, um, after this film is 17, do you have plans for another one? Of course, absolutely. Yeah, we we uh, look. Uh, the good thing is, I mean, because obviously of nice people like your good self who uh you know have me on your podcast and obviously the folks out there hear about the work i'm doing and they go to the website and they download a film it means that uh, things are picking up and going well which means that the projects can get more frequent and bigger and better like this is the biggest one we've done so far which is fantastic so uh yeah no we're i'm only looking in an upwards direction so there's absolutely going to be more films and more audio downloads and uh more hilarity coming out of the Beer Nuts Productions Fun Factory. Uh, I'm always excited to see uh, what what you have that's new. It, um, <laughs> and I haven't read the uh, the Magical Forest. Is that the book? Yeah, G- G- Jimmy Green and his adventures in the Magic Forest. I, I got to say, if uh, it, it, uh, how can I best describe? Well, let, let's put it this way: the best way for me to sort of give folks out there an idea of what they're going to be in for if they if they uh, have a read of that book is that I took it to six different illustrate because I mean there's 20 illustrations in there which are just incredible Ilya did them for me but before I met Ilya I took it to six different other illustrators and none of them all of them refused to be a part of this they're all like oh no no I can't do this this is far too inappropriate oh no 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 so uh, then I met Ilya and she was all about it. She thought it was hilarious. She got the joke, and she did some of the greatest illustrations you're ever likely to see. That's just so so funny. It's probably one of my favourite things because back when I was doing stand up comedy, I actually wrote the book back then and would like read it on stage as a as a stand up comedy bit. And then when I started making the films and everything, and I started branching out with the books and all that sort of stuff. I had this stand-up comedy bit, and I thought, well, I don't want to waste it because, you know, I think it's really funny. Why don't I turn it into an actual book? So that that's how that sort of came about. So, And there is a YouTube preview of that too. So if people uh, jump on the Beer Nuts Productions website, they hit the books page. Uh, that's the first one up there, and they, they can watch a little YouTube trailer of it so they get a bit of an idea of what the book is all about as well. So I try and do that as much as I can. The Beer Nuts Productions YouTube channel has all, you know, trailers of all the films and all that sort of stuff. So it's a good way for people to get a bit of an idea of what I'm about and what I, what I produce. And so they know what they want to download basically. I, yeah, I think that's awesome. I love it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think everything that you do is really fun. It's always, uh, except I mean, there's the occasional not lighthearted, fun, silly, uh, thing that you do, but for the most part, it is um, it, it is incredibly lighthearted. It is so much fun, and uh, I I, tr- I truly enjoy everything that you've produced that I've seen. So it's good. Oh, it's good stuff. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Stuart. I appreciate that. I really do. Because, uh, look, at the end of the day, I just want to make people laugh and have a good time. And that's what, I mean, that's what all the projects are about. But the new film, especially, the How to Land That Dream Job, that's what that, you know, I just want people to sit back and, and have a laugh. And, and that's why I deal in stereotypes, because people can always recognise. So, like I say, there's 16 different uh, peop- applicants coming in. But I'm sure that out of that 16... It, people would know at least or have come across in their lifetime at least eight of those sorts of people you know whether it be like the stuck up snobby housewife or the the junky mother or the you know the asshole guy who thinks he's you know god's gift to women or the you know the dodgy thug criminal type dude i mean everybody has met somebody that's in this film you know what i mean so it uh, it hopefully will make people laugh in that regard because it'll make them think of uh, folks they know Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, like I said, I definitely have hired at least eight <laughs> of the people that, that you listed. That uh, they, Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, good. Well, um, I don't know how you feel, but I, uh, I, I, I feel a little odd asking you this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. But um, I, I, I was actually thinking about hiring – an intern here. Oh well, well I, I would love to be your intern. I think that uh, I, I think that I've got a lot of quality skills that uh, that the sketch comedy podcast could utilize. Really, you would you'd be willing to interview for the job? Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Okay. Um. Well, cool. Well, I'll just I'll, I'll ask you a couple questions. Um. We tell me a little bit about your uh, educational background. Well, well, I mean, there wasn't much education. I mean, I'm from Australia, so I mean, when we weren't chasing kangaroos or or, or fisting koalas, there there really wasn't uh, there really wasn't time for schooling. So so it was more just uh, life lessons uh, we learned in in the outback. That's pretty much uh, that's pretty much my education. Okay, all right. Um, did, did I'm sorry? Did you say fit, fisting? Uh, never mind. Um, Okay, well, uh, and tell hey, me a little those, bit about those, those koalas loved it. Don't worry, nobody got hurt. It was it was uh, a gentle fisting. Was, oh, it was very consensual. I mean, they, you know, they they, they make this purring sound, and it's just uh, it, it's quite lovely actually to hear. You know, it just it just makes you want to fist them even more. I need to get to the outback. <laughs> All right. Um, tell me a little bit about your work ethic. Like, what kind of uh, what can I get expect as far as work ethic? Well, I, I think it's really important that people have a solid nine to five workday, and within that nine to five workday, I think it's really important that you're high from nine thirty onwards. I think that's that it, it's crucial, really. That you know, you get the pipe out and you just you just you know sit back and just chill out. And you eat chocolate biscuits for at least at least seven and a half hours of that eight hour work day. I think that's really, really important. I think it's also good for office morale, you know, because it's good to keep everybody in the office up and happy. So I think that's really, really important. So you're telling me for seven and a half hours you're gonna eat biscuits? Yes. I think that's what, what completely... do you do for the what do you do for the other half hour? Uh, well, I, I shit to to empty the tummy, so I've got room for the biscuits. Mm, that that does make sense. That does make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Goff, where where would you say you see yourself in five years? Where would I see myself in five years? Well, I, I hopefully hopefully I'll be running the sketch comedy podcast, and you will have disappeared somewhere in some kind of a tragic lawn mowing accident. And that, 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 that will be tragic, but I will be there to take your place. And so I think I'll be running the sketch comedy empire is what I think will be happening in five years time. And it'll be tragic. It'll be tragic. And look, I'm happy to console your many wives and, and do what I need to do after your tragic lawn mowing accident. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to step into the breach because it's just what I do. Like I said earlier, I'm all heart and caring, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I, I really think that's wonderful that you'd be willing to take over and 
take over for all of my wives that I have as well. well I think that's it's just the kind of guy I am. I, I believe that polygamy is big in in Portland. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's moved across the country from you know just Salt Lake City, and it's now moved more more uh, east, west, north, and south. And and so yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to uh to help you out. I'm sorry if I've outed your your secrets. I, I apologize, but I thought that. Everybody must have known, you know. Well, it's it's well known that within the the Portland um, city limits, uh, it's a requirement. Uh, ironic facial hair, m- multiple <laughs> wives. Ironic facial hair. I'm going to have to uh, get busy growing in that case. But don't worry, <laughs> I'll have a, a nice uh, cookie duster will come in within a couple of days, so I'll be fine. Okay. All right. Um, I guess I I just have uh, one other thing is. We do have a, a time requirement, so we do need you to be here by 9 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I could get there a, around 9 a.m. I mean, you know, I mean, would you consider 1 p.m. to be around? I mean, it's around the 9 a.m. mark, so I think that that would be, be appropriate. I mean, you know, and let's face it, all I'm doing is, you know, recording podcasts and, and taking over from you and your many wives. So, I mean, it, uh, surely there's not that much involved. So, I mean, you know, maybe I could stretch it out till two, actually. Just come in at two, you know, knock out a, a, a few podcasts, say hello to your many wives and uh, be out by 4.30. I think that that would be completely reasonable. You know, I think you have such a good handle on this job. Uh, obviously podcasts, super easy to do. It's ridiculously easy and takes no time whatsoever. That's why we always give it away for free is because it doesn't take any effort at all. So I think you've got a great idea. I I think you've got the right idea. And I think, uh, I like your not so much go get them attitude, but, uh, more like go take a nap them attitude. (laughs) And, uh, I think you're hired. Oh, well, thank you. For, and look, Stuart, I can honestly say with my hand on my heart, I look forward to disappointing you and letting you down at every turn. Uh, it's just like with the things I say to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Well, I, uh, I, got, I, I always appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much. Um, again, the movie is... Uh, How to Land That Dream Job, and it's available for direct download just straight off the Beer Nuts Productions website. So all people have to do is go to, uh, you know, all the Ws, beernutsproductions.com. So nice and easy, just beernutsproductions.com, and they can uh, click on the movies page and download How to Land That Dream Job. And obviously they can check out all of our other films and audios and books and all that other crap as well. So whatever, hopefully whatever your, uh, your listeners, uh, will find humorous, uh, we've got something to cater for them, but yeah, the, the new film, I'm really excited. I've got to say, I'm really excited about the new film. I'm, I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it, uh, I think a lot of people are going to have a, a good giggle. So, uh, yeah, just uh, beernutsproductions.com is where people need to go. Outstanding. Well, I'll, we'll send them there. <laughs> thank you sir i appreciate it you bet thank you no worries cheers Stuart.